You know, there was a book uh, entitled Dispensational Truth by Clarence Larkin. Uh, this is one of the more popular books regarding this uh, dispensational theology. I remember seeing this book in uh, that bookstore I used to go to in Queens. And, um, you know, this uh, book is filled with charts. I think there were like 90 charts or something. Uh, obviously a very talented man uh, that could draw that way. Uh, so let me just give you a piece from this um, book here. It says, The word gospel means good news and is so familiar that its application is supposed to be uniform. When therefore we read of the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the grace of God, the glorious gospel, and the everlasting gospel, it is taken for granted that they all refer to one and the same thing. But this is not true. Let me just stop there. Uh, th you, you're going to get a glimpse into how this whole system of uh, thinking, this dispensational type of thinking, goes just by what I read to you. I remember reading stuff like this and saying, huh, what, what's, what's this all about? So he says uh, it's taken for granted that they all refer to one and the same thing, but this is not true. I'm going to interject here and tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to tell you it's taken for granted because it is true. In other words, when you hear the word gospel, whether it be gospel of the kingdom, grace of God, glorious gospel, everlasting gospel, it is talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And do not ever forget that. Here's another clip from this book uh, by Clarence Larkin. Uh, he says here, the gospel of the kingdom, uh, reference to Matthew 24 and verse 14. He said, this is the good news that God uh, purposes to set up a kingdom on this earth over which David's son Jesus shall reign as prophesied in Luke 132 and 33. Two preachings of this gospel are mentioned, one past beginning with the ministry of John the Baptist and preached by Jesus and his disciples, but it ended with the rejection of Jesus as king. This gospel is to be preached again after this church, after the church is taken out. Okay, uh, let me just explain it a little. So here, uh, this man, this dispensational uh, uh, Clarence Larkin, he's saying, look, uh, this gospel of the kingdom, you know, John the Baptist preached it, Jesus preached it with his disciples, but when the Jews rejected Christ, that's when it stopped, okay? Uh, the gospel is going to be preached again after the church is taken out. He's talking about the church being raptured. That's what that's about. And it will be the fulfillment of Matthew 24 and 14 where it says, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This has no reference to the gospel that is now being preached to the nations. It is the gospel of salvation. But the gospel of the kingdom is not for salvation, but for a witness. That is, it is the announcement that the time has come to set up the kingdom. Now, uh, I'm going to see, I'm going to show you, I should say, what this man has done. Uh, folks, the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It, it has always been the gospel of Jesus Christ. But this man is telling you, oh no, it, it, this stopped. It, when, when, the, when the disciples stopped preaching it, when uh, uh, Israel rejected it, that's when it stopped. And, but it's not the gospel of salvation. It's not for salvation, but it's for a witness. Now, folks, when I was a new Christian, when I read the scriptures and, and, and I read the, you know, Matthew 24 and so on and so forth, I, I knew exactly what it meant. You know, the Lord said, look, this is the, this gospel is going to be preached into all the world for a witness. Uh, folks, in a million years, I would not think of the interpretation this man comes up with. In other words, you, you're preaching the gospel. Of course, it's for a witness. You're going to witness to people. It's a witness. Here's, here's, here's how to get saved. This is a, here's a message of how to come to know Jesus Christ. So this man says, oh, no, it's only a witness. So now we're talking about that Jewish millennium type of thinking again, folks. And uh, this is where this man... Uh, made his word above the words of Jesus Christ. It's amazing uh, how he does it. And and he so basically says, uh, it will be preached first by Elijah the forerunner, and he references Malachi 4, 
uh, chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, and by others who shall be commissioned to bear the news to all nations as a proclamation of the coming of Christ as king to occupy the throne of David and for the purpose of regathering Israel to the promised land. So you, you see where this dispensational uh, teaching goes. And by the way, he quotes Malachi, uh, references Malachi 4 and 5 and 6 uh, regarding Elijah coming uh, to speak about this kingdom. But you know that that uh, Malachi 4 and 5 and 6, Jesus uh, Christ himself, he, he let us know. That was fulfilled already. So they're looking forward to this Elijah coming uh, to preach this kingdom where Jesus told his own disciples that that was fulfilled in John the Baptist. Oh, yes, he did. Now, I'm going to give you some references. You can look them up for yourself. Matthew 11, verses 13 uh, to 13. Um, when Matthew 11, 13, you can read that for yourself. If you will receive it, the Lord says. If you will receive it. And he was speaking about John the Baptist, that, that Elijah had come. Matthew 17, verses 10 to 13. Elijah has come already. Uh, Mark 9, 11 to 13. Elijah is indeed come. Luke 1, 17. Uh, John, speaking of John the Baptist, he came in the spirit, and he's going to speak in the spirit and power of Elijah. And John the Baptist himself, ladies and gentlemen, he called himself a voice in the wilderness. He was the fulfillment of the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 40, uh, verse 3. And you can find other references, Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, John chapter 1, verse 23. So, you know, one false teaching of the dispensationalist hinges upon another. And this is how this whole system goes haywire, basically. So uh, you would never come up with that interpretation, folks. You know, the gospel was a witness to the nations. And I'm going to give you the context of that right now. I'm going to go to Matthew 24, verses 3 to 14. I'll read that to you right now. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, speaking of Christ, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity Equity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So, Ladies and gentlemen, I just uh, showed you, I gave you the context uh, before that final verse where it speaks about the gospel being preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now keep in mind, uh, the disciples were asking him, uh, what, what, what will be the sign? Uh, tell us, when are these things uh, going to come to pass? So you don't hear Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, talking about any type of a, a postponement of this kingdom gospel to be continued at another point in time. Jesus himself said this gospel is going to be preached. And he just rehearsed all of the things that would be happening before uh, he came again, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, th th this is a hijacking of, of the gospel, folks. This is a, this is a doctrine of devils, the, the, the way this whole system uh, is put together. So um, the Lord told the, the disciples, take heed that no man deceive you. He spoke about uh, wars and rumors of wars, persecutions, afflictions, being hated for his name's sake, and so on and so forth. So uh, this kingdom gospel, folks, uh, it, it is being preached. And we're, we're preaching. We're preaching a kingdom gospel. We're not preaching any different gospel than the Lord Jesus Christ gave us. Uh, very important 
uh, that you know that. So you got to remember, ladies and gentlemen, there are different versions of dispensationalism. You know, some will say the words of Jesus are not for us. Talk about rightly dividing the truth. Some will even say evangelism is not for us. That was spoken of in in the Gospels. You know, after the Lord rose from the dead, where he says, "Take this to the end of the end, end of the earth." You see, some will even say, "Oh no, that's that's for the future. Uh, that's when um, uh, that's you know when the church is taken up, and then the gospel will stop being." preached again but it's not for now oh no no and, and then it gets into all that stuff and, and uh as i said to me you know i began as talking about the man that said you know paul was the only one who preached basically the the gospel of grace and so on and so forth so uh i just wanted to give you a little glimpse into uh, what this thing is about first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 it says now this is paul by the way now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils